So the questions kept coming today, and in some cases criticism for Liberal leader Justin Trudeau over his wearing of blackface. And today we have some polling numbers that give us some sense of how this story is playing out with the Canadian people. David Coletto is the CEO of Abacus Data, and he's with me now. David, good to see you again. Good to see you. Always a pleasure to have you on the program. So this dominated the campaign last week. It hasn't gone away. We're st still seeing, uh, seeing and hearing questions about it. And we're going to get into sort of how that's playing right. out with the, with the people you've surveyed. But let's start with the context for these numbers. What do we need to know before we start? So we did this survey entirely after uh, the photos and the video came out on Wednesday and Thursday. We interviewed 1,929 uh, Canadians, representative sample, and we finished it actually Sunday morning, yesterday morning. Uh, so we've got a good large sample completely done after the events. And so we can now see what damage, if any, has it done to the Liberals and who's benefited, if any, from that damage. All right, so we're going to go, we're going to go through these numbers in terms of uh, the sort of horse race issue, then the kind of impressions of leaders and what's changing or, or what's not changed, then, you know, how this is resonating with, with voters and voting groups. So let's start with the national race. What's happening? Yeah, the, not much, actually. Our last survey was done just before the campaign started, and so stuff may have happened in between. But we're at a point today that was where we found the race, and a lot of other polls, frankly, are finding the race, which is a statistical tie between the Conservatives and the Liberals nationally. 34 for the uh, Conservatives, 32 for the Liberals, 15 for the NDP, 10 for the Greens. In Quebec, uh, when we look at some of the regional numbers, uh, the Bloc is at 18, uh, but the Liberals still holding uh, a sizable lead over the Conservatives. Uh, not surprising, the Conservatives doing well in the prairies, uh, doing well in, in, in Saskatchewan and Alberta in particular. But all eyes on Ontario, all eyes on BC, two very competitive uh, provinces right now with the Liberals slightly ahead in Ontario. And we've, we're getting an exact deadlock tie in British Columbia. So, so the race at the national level looks very close. It's more or less where it's been in our polling for the last few months. But underneath it, it still points to perhaps an advantage for the Liberals because of the way mm. some of these votes might be splitting. So in, in the, what, in the five or six days now since the whole blackface controversy has blown up, we don't really see a whole lot of movement because of it in the polls, right? Not in the horse race polls. Yeah. We'll get to some of the others. And horse race is usually the last thing that moves, one of those lagging indicators. Right. But as of right now, there's, there's very few Canadians out there who said they would have voted Liberal, let's say, at the start of this campaign, who now say, I'm not voting Liberal because of this and other things that have happened in the campaign. So when you look at the horse race and voting intentions, talk to me about age. Well, How age is an important one, down? right? We've, yeah. We're going to talk more about younger voters in a minute because there's some talk that maybe they're the most sensitive to, to, to these events. Um, but we've seen little change, right? The, the Conservatives do best among older Canadians. They do less well among younger Canadians. The NDP and the Greens get a larger share of that 18 to 29 vote, which has been the case. This is not a new phenomenon. And you can see really... Quite remarkably, the Liberal vote is pretty consistent across all age groups. This looks very similar um, to what we saw earlier. Um, it's, a, it's a challenging kind of environment for the Liberals, in part because one of the big questions of this campaign remains, will younger voters come out in the same way they did in 2015? The Liberals, based on these numbers, need them to do that because the Conservatives uh, are, are leading among that more reliable Older, uh, older demographic. All right, let's go to the impression of the leaders and what people are saying uh, in your survey about uh, Justin Trudeau and others. Let's start with Justin Trudeau. Yeah, what do here you see? we have seen some movement um, that's outside the margin of error. So compared to the start of the campaign, Mr. Trudeau's positive numbers are down four points to 31 points. That's the lowest we've actually tracked him um, since he's become prime minister. Mm -hmm. So it is a, a low point. Um, you can go back to sort of the worst of the SNC controversy um, and, and that's a similar, and his negatives are up to 49%. So there, there seems to be, um, whether it's, and, I, and I, I'm going to assume it's this blackface photos right. that have done this, um, that have, have, have really weakened uh, his numbers. Not, not decimated them, but they're trending down, and we'll have to see whether they continue. So um, you wonder about advantages for other leaders when that kind of thing starts to happen. Okay, yeah. so uh, let's talk about that. What, what, this is a place where maybe Andrew Scheer could benefit from this. Is he? He's not. Um, his, his positives are also down three points. His negatives only up one. Um, so, so this hasn't had any sort of halo effect in pushing either Mr. Scheer's numbers up or if we talk about the NDP leader, 
uh, Jagmeet Singh, same thing. He, I think, my, my not pollster head, right. uh, commentator head, I think he's had a good week and a half of this campaign. But he's gotten lots of, lots lots of, of, lots of positive press for, yeah. in particular, his reaction to the whole blackface controversy. Right. But what's happened? But his numbers haven't, his negatives haven't gone up, but his positives went down, which means, you know, people, uh, there are moments in the campaign where people pay attention. We'll see whether there's a legacy of this, this event that helps Jagmeet Singh, but right now, people haven't really responded overly positive. They're not responding negatively, but it hasn't really given him a boost in his numbers. And I think this next one is really interesting too. Elizabeth yeah. May, who was kind of on this upward trajectory, yeah. oops, <laughs> back down to earth back a little down, bit. Back down, back down. And that means people are f going back into the middle. They're saying, I no longer feel ready to say she, I've got a positive or negative view of her, although her negatives are up a little bit. Uh, it's more people back in the, in, in the middle. And I think your next question is going to tie why this might be the case, right? Why is it that these, this massive event, this is a, a huge shock right. to, to the election, hasn't really moved too many of these numbers? Well, when we ask people, how closely are you actually following the campaign? You have to, yeah, you have to be paying attention out there to form some sort of kind of opinion, right? And so yeah. if you're not paying attention, and what do we see? Well, we find that while most Canadians are saying they're following the campaign so far very closely or pretty closely, a sizable number, on the other side say either not at all or a little bit, yeah, right? Al and al so Almost half are saying that, yeah. Uh, so almost two weeks into this campaign, after, even after what was a moment, a moment in which the rest, and I'll show you in a minute, most of the country were aware of, there's still a lot of Canadians who aren't fully tuning in. Now, not all Canadians will tune into this election. We know that, you know, if we're lucky, 70% of Canadians will actually cast a ballot, but still, this is a, this is a high number, um, not at this necessarily stage of the campaign, but by the end of the campaign, we will see that the tension increase as we go forward. Let's talk about uh, which party will form government. And, and this is their thoughts on, on where the election might be headed and who will win. What do we see? Yeah, we actually see as, as much as the, the horse race is tight, so is the predicted horse race, right? 41% uh, of people think the Conservatives are going to win this election. 40% think the Liberals. And then all the other parties are, are down very low in single digits. This, to me, is so important to understanding what impact you know, the blackface photos might have. Mm -hmm. Because on the one hand, as I'll show you in a minute, you know, certain voters reacted quite negatively to those comments, but they weren't who we might have assumed would have. They were actually more conservative-oriented voters. On the flip side, if you're a more progressive-oriented voter, on the one hand, you may be, a, may be disappointed. But if you think the conservatives have a chance of winning this election, that is going to have an impact ultimately on what choice you make. And that is the, that's the calculus, I think, right. going through a lot of people's minds. So uh, let's look at that. So, so you, you see that number, then you, you, you ask, you know, how, how is your mind made up, basically? Yeah. How, how firm is your choice? What, what do you see? Well, almost two-thirds of Canadians say their, their, their choice is made up. And when you look at how they're going to vote, it looks similar to the national numbers. About 36% would vote Conservative, 32%, uh, Liberal, 13 much a little bit lower for the New Democrats. But one out of three voters also say, I am not made up my mind. And that includes people who may not vote, but that's a sizable group of people who you know, can shift. And if we consider that the election is incredibly close, one or two points movement might be the difference between the Liberals or the Conservatives winning minority, winning the most seats, mm -hmm. maybe even winning majority government. So being so close means everything can have a big impact. Okay, uh, now let's drill down a little bit on sort of these findings around the whole blackface story. Yeah. Um, what do you see when you, you talk to Canadians, on, you, know, you, you canvass them on the issue of awareness? Does everybody know about this story? Almost everybody, right? And, and awareness creeped up over the course of the days that we did this survey to the point where now half of Canadians say they're following the story closely or they've heard a lot about it. 34% uh, say they've heard at least something about it and 12% admit I haven't heard about it, right? And that's not surprising. And in fact, when we compare it to other public affairs stories that often come out of Ottawa or, or relate to Canadian politics, this is significant. This, within a very short period of time, spread quickly. People became aware of it. And so it's on people's radar, no doubt about that. And uh, what, talk to me about reaction. About those, those who are paying attention, what do they, what do they say? Well, if, if you, you know, this is, the, this is the difference. It's always interesting as a pollster because you, you see how the media and Twitter reacts, and then you expect to see the same kind of reaction from the public, but that's not always the case, and that's not the case here. Right. Twenty-four percent of Canadians were offended by this, uh, and they say that their view of Mr. Trudeau has become worse. But everybody else has a, a more 
has a different view, right? 42%, the largest group say, this didn't bother me really at all. Um, and another 34 say, I didn't like what he did, but I accept his apology and I'm ready to move on. So, you know, the vast majority of the public um, reacted, I think, as we saw in the commentary, uh, as you talk to people and, and how we saw that. But that 24% and who they are is really important. And it's interesting, most of that 24%, as I said earlier, are not liberal voters, are not progressive voters even, they're more conservative voters. And so as this is the conservatives who say, aha, right, here's Justin Trudeau being a hypocrite, and they were the ones who ne reacted the most negatively in terms of its impact on politics, probably less important right. because they weren't going to vote for him in the first uh, okay. place. Okay, and what about how it might impact uh, their decisions at the ballot box? Well, this is where, again, we see the same kind of numbers. 40% say they weren't voting liberal anyways, so it doesn't matter. 48% said it won't affect their vote, other issues will matter, but 12%, not an ins insignificant mm -hmm. number. Especially though. in a race, if it's this close, exactly. 12% is a big I'm number. I'm not downplaying the potential impact of this. 12% is a lot. Um, right now, a lot of them are staying with the Liberals, but this has caused them to reconsider. And when we look at, you know, how they might reconsider, whether they'd reconsider or not, and who they would prefer to be the Prime Minister, who, which, gover which party they prefer to win between the Liberals or the Conservatives, right that middle group is much more split, which means, again, the potential impact of this. If, if it swings slightly one way or the other over the next few days, that could, be, that could be the difference if no other campaign event between now and Election Day gets people, uh, gets people to Right, consider. so on, that la on last, our last board here, 77%. Uh, so walk us So let me walk you through yeah, this. So exactly among those what who these say numbers tell us? they um, would not vote, like the reaction to this event is, I'm not gonna vote liberal anyway, so it doesn't matter most of them would prefer the Conservatives to win this election right. as opposed to the Liberal. We're forcing a choice here. On the other end, among those who say this won't affect my vote, other things matter, most of them say I would prefer the Liberals over the Conservatives, right? So it shows that, that sort of, uh, those are the polls. But in the middle, that small group of 12%, when we ask them who would you rather win this election, which if you think of strategic voting and the, the, sort of the, comp, the, the complexity of the choice a lot of voters are making, it's almost split down the middle, leans to the, to the Liberals there. So, so this tells us, one, there doesn't appear to be a lot of movement in the early days after this, this event. Two, people are well aware of it, um, so it's not something that's going to still take time to, to sort of seep down into public consciousness. But three, because the election's so close, one or two points, if, if, if this becomes the thing that, that causes some Liberals to stay home or not vote Liberal, it could be... Uh, could be the thing that stops the Liberals from getting real. Right, and I guess the thing to watch for in, in that context is, okay, well, uh, it, you know, and this is a lot of the questions we're hearing, you know, are about, okay, is, is this it or could there be something else? So you have people who say they've kind of come to a place in the road where they've made their decision, they've seen it, they're right. ready to move on because he says he's ready to move on, but if there's something else, uh, it'll be interesting to see whether, okay, wait a minute, there's a, a new appraisal uh, in the voter pool yeah. for that, right? Yeah. All right, David Coletto, always good to get the background on the numbers and what they mean. Good to talk to you. Pleasure, Peter.